Uh, I will. Okay. Um, so thank okay. you everyone for for coming to this talk. Much appreciated. As as we do occasionally get a couple of technical problems, we seem to have sorted those out now. Um, very lucky to have um, Professor Kim Dale from Dundee University is going to be discussing biomedical science and obviously other things around that. So biomedical science at Dundee, biomedical science as a career, and biomedical science as, a, as an academic pursuit in general. Um, so I'm going to hand over to her in a second, and she's going to take the next um, 20 minutes, half an hour of the session. And just before that, as always, if you have any questions for Professor Dale, please put them into yeah, um, the chat function uh, on, on Zoom there. If your microphone is on, then definitely turn your microphone off. I can hear somebody's buzzing quite heavily. Um, so make sure that's off the whole time. And let's come to the end and you want to ask a question, that's absolutely fine. If you don't want to put your question in the chat, you can email myself or Miss McAteer directly and we'll also read them that way, okay? So thank you very much for coming. I'm gonna hand over to Professor Dale now. Um, Kim. Hi, Joe. thank you so much. And um, it's absolutely wonderful, complete pleasure to be back with um, Alice Smith, even if virtually for the moment, let's hope that next year we can all be together again in person. But yes, it's an absolute pleasure to come and speak to you today about our biomedical sciences undergraduate degrees at the University of Dundee. But a little bit first to just place ourselves. So um, we're calling today from Scotland, which has been heralded as one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And you can see from this stunning photographs, the gorgeous scenery um, that we're lucky enough to live amongst. Um, and the city of Dundee just sits here nestled on the edge of the River Tay. And it's been heralded as Scotland's best place to live and is in the top 10 most affordable cities in the UK to live, which is of course very important for student life. The city of Dundee sits on the east coast of Scotland, about an hour north of the capital, which is of course Edinburgh. Um, so the University of Dundee is in the top 250 in the world, and it's very much a campus-based university. So this is a bird's eye view, and what you'll see is that pretty much all of that um, visual there is, are the various buildings of the university. So it's a five minute walk from anywhere, whether that be the IT suites, the library, the gym, um, or the lecture theatres. So our university, like many universities, has a number of different schools, but we're focusing specifically today on the School of Life Sciences. So our School of Life Sciences um, is world renowned and in fact top in the UK for research in biological and biomedical sciences. So that's really saying that we are, you know, the, the quality and the rigor of our research is absolutely world class. We're also sixth in the UK and 18th in the world for publications in biomedical research and sixth in the UK in a very recent report um, for the spin out successes. So commercializing our discoveries. This next slide just shows one of the recent sort of discoveries that came from one of our 10 research divisions. And this was a new anti-malarial drug that's in clinical trials. So that is just one of our 10 research divisions. We actually have many other areas within biomedical sciences where we're doing top class research. And that ranges from cancer biology, microbiology, um, looking at sort of nucleic acid structures, looking at molecular and clinical medicine and microbiology. Um, and that is very important, not only in terms of the research and the impact that we have, but also because those world-class researchers are the same individuals who then design and deliver our modules at later stages of the undergraduate program. And that's why we're also top in the UK for pharmacology and pharmacy, and fourth in the UK for both biological and biomedical science teaching. So the courses that we have are really designed to make sure that the students are equipped with skills that employers are looking for. All of our courses reflect the current research, so you'll be learning about elements that are really relevant to human health. We're learning from world-class researchers, as I said, because those are the people that also design and deliver the modules in the later years of our programs. And all of that teaching is undertaken in labs um, equipped with facilities that are really state of the art. 
So the variety of our undergraduate programs um, reflect all of those different research areas I talked about. So we have um, drug discovery, neuroscience, pharmacology, microbiology, and every single one of those degrees that you see there are accredited by the Royal Society of Biology. I'll come back to this degree program at the end in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to let you know what accreditation means. Um, so this means that it's a really, it's an external badge of approval, really showing the quality and the rigor of the programs that we have. And in a recent assessment where we received accreditation for the next five years, they highlighted certain specific points of good practice, particularly around the fact that we make sure every student who wants to do a laboratory project in their program gets the opportunity to do so. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So as with most courses in Scotland, our undergraduate program is a four year course. And no matter which one of those degrees that you choose to apply to in Dundee, everybody does the same lectures and practicals in the first two years. What that means is that by the end of year two, if you wish to switch to a different undergraduate program, because you've had a taster lecture, let's say in genetics or microbiology, you could switch to those programs at any point in those first two years. So it really gives you a huge amount of flexibility. Um, so in those first two years, you'll be doing a lot of practicals. So from even the first week when you first join us, um, you get um, in a non-COVID year, you get two three hour practical sessions every week. So really building up your core competencies and skills in being able to conduct experiments and interpret those results. At the end of year two, the decision in year three is whether you follow biological or biomedical sciences. So I just wanted to highlight a little bit around the difference between those different degree routes. Um, biological sciences really focuses on different, uh, different model systems. So that might be animals or plants or cells, really looking inside the cell about what's regulating gene expression, cell division, the response of cells to drugs. Whereas biomedical sciences, the model system is the human body. So really looking at a more organismal level around the physiology from molecular level up to that whole organism level, how the brain and the nervous system work, how the body responds to drugs. In level four, that's the year where the first semester, you get the opportunity to choose to do a lab project. So that's where you spend 11 weeks really embedded in one of those world-class research labs, part of the team working alongside a PhD student on your own little project. And semester two of that year, you take advanced modules in the degree route that you have chosen. There is the option to actually stay on for a fifth year and then graduate with an integrated masters. So this is still an undergraduate degree, but it just means you have an extra opportunity to really do an in-depth research project in that fifth year. So there are many types of honours projects. There are, of course, the lab-based projects I just referred to, and those you might undertake a project in the life sciences building I showed in my first slide, or in the Crop Research Institute, or indeed within a lab in the medical school. Some students choose to do, instead of a lab-based project, they choose to do a science communication project or perhaps a bio-business project looking at patents or science policy. So this little photograph here on the left is our brand new cohort of Honours Project students. And in fact, the one on the top right there is the student, one of the four students that's joined to do an Honours Project in my own lab. In the bottom right is um, a photograph of the students who chose to do honours projects this year in science communication. So that's where you design perhaps um, a project that you need to take into schools and it's about outreach and explaining the relevance and importance of doing science to the public. 
This slide gives some of the examples of lab projects that have been done in recent years. So you can see that they range from neuroscience to genome editing, to looking at the role of um, mRNA modifiers. Um, so a whole range of different projects. And what happens is those projects are advertised by the researchers and then the honors students get to choose what they would like to do. I just want to come back to a program that um, was on one of my earlier slides, and this is a very special program we have at Dundee. And this is one in which it's a joint program with Dundee and with the National University of Singapore, which is of course ranked number 11 in the world. That this program is one where students spend two and a half years in Dundee, and then they transfer to NUS for the last year and a half. So that means you undertake your honours project at NUS instead of in Dundee. And students on this programme graduate with a certificate from both universities. So one certificate, one graduation um, with the crest of both institutions. So a really special opportunity to learn from researchers in two world-class institutions. So in addition, it's always so important to think about other opportunities to broaden your horizons when you're working at your undergraduate degree. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have a lot of those opportunities. So you might, for example, undertake a, a placement in a research lab. You might take a year out in industry, or you might apply to do an internship. So we have the opportunity for about 40 summer placements that you can do either in the summer between level two and three or in the summer between level three and four. And you get paid a little stipend for working in a lab, learning your different skill sets that could be really useful then when you do your undergraduate honors project. We have a lot of industry partners um, and indeed homegrown spin out companies that also offer the opportunity to do internships in the summer. And this slide just highlights six of those local companies that have offered two projects in each of the company for the summer next year. So these would be things that are advertised in December and then students apply for what they want to do and they have a little interview. Um, and if you're successful, you get to do these internships, which are fantastic to have on your CV. We do offer the opportunity for students to go on exchange. So rather than a summer um, placement, this is where you take a semester from your um, year two or year three to go to one of our partners that are in either Europe or further afield. And those are institutions where we've done curriculum mapping to make sure you're learning um, elements that are still relevant to the degree that you've undertaken in Dundee. We also have many opportunities for students to undertake leadership um, opportunities. So for example, here is one of our fantastic um, integrated master's students, Sei, and he received an honorable mention in the innovator of the year category, which is a set of prizes in the School of Life Sciences. So what Sei did was to develop a system to quantify animal behavior from videos. And he received, um, as I say, a prize for that. What I'd like to do now is just show you a video that we recently developed um, reflecting um, the um, experiences of some of our Southeast Asian students that are living and studying in Dundee at the moment. Now, Kim, sorry to interrupt there. I, I, I'm not getting any volume on that. I don't know if anyone else is, but at the moment I'm, I'm not hearing anything. So. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so no sorry, Joe. No problem Joe. at all, uh, easy, or easy, easily done. No problem. What I will do then is to send you the PowerPoint with that 
video embedded and then you can share that with the students would that yeah, work no, absolutely yeah no problem at all no problem that's a shame never mind i'll send that over to you joe no problem okay. so perhaps now what's a really important element of student choice of where to study is what career support is embedded in the programs and so this is just a slide showing you that we embed throughout the four-year program, some career and enterprise modules um, at levels one and two. We have the opportunity to, for students to attend industry-led masterclasses to learn about career opportunities in industry. We have student-led life science career conferences. So a whole host of opportunities, both um, embedded within the curriculum, but also added into extracurricular activities to learn about careers in the medical sciences industry. And so what do some of our graduates go on to do? And really the answer to that is absolutely anything. So this is a website, again, when I share the um, PowerPoint with Joe, you'll be able to go to this web link, which shows you some of our graduate destinations. But just to highlight, so this is a slide in which we've highlighted exit destinations from some of our degree routes. So some of our students go on to do masters or PhDs. Um, and in the, the University of Dundee, we actually have two different types of master's programs here. We have taught programs where students do two taught semesters and then the third semester is a research project. And those programs include bio business elements. So you can learn about business, entrepreneurship, management in the context of science. Alternatively, for those that want to follow an academic um, career, we have a master's by research where students do a nine month project in a lab and then write up a little mini PhD. You have the option as well after that nine months to trade in that program of work um, as part of your first year of a PhD. So that really is for students that want to think about following an academic route. And so many of our students have either taken an academic or an industry career route, and this is just highlighting some of those opportunities. So as I said, PhDs, master's students, or perhaps working as a research assistant at the Wellcome Sanger Institute. Within industry, we've had students go on to multinational um, um, industry um, companies, as well as more local companies. So Dundee really is a bio hub that's had an enormous amount of investment in the last year or two. And we're actually developing um, a bio innovation hub for new spin out companies to develop themselves and to also bring in internships at undergraduate and master's level. So lots of opportunities um, to participate at the forefront of cutting edge science there. Again, these are more examples where perhaps students have left the science arena, but used the skill sets that they've developed to go on to work in law and business. And so that's why I say that this undergraduate degree route is a fantastic um, option to consider, because what we give you is a set of transferable skills, such as learning to work in a team, learning as in working as an independent um, learner and thinker, being a problem solver and a troubleshooter, working to deadlines. And those are a huge set of tra transferable skills that you can use pretty much in any walk of life. So our ambition is to give you the best possible preparation for career in biosciences with a real emphasis then on becoming proficient problem solvers. Particularly in um, this day and age, um, it's important to note that Dundee has also been heralded as one of the very safest places to study in the UK. And I think that that's a really important element, both for students and for your parents to think about. This again, this highlights our entry requirements for all of our degree routes, um, whether it's A-levels or IB um, qualifications that you come in with. And again, there's another video link there, which show you the science facilities that we have, um, which I'm sure that many of you would like to look at um, at a later opportunity. So I'm just gonna finish there and just thank you very much for listening to the talk today. My contact details are here and I'm the admissions tutor for the school. So I would be absolutely delighted to hear from any of you um, if any of you want to contact me after this event. Thank you very much and I'll take any questions. Great, thank you very much, Kim. That was brilliant. Well, I think it's a really good overview there of, of you know, your particular facility and how it runs, particularly going into some of the career stuff. 
So again, while we're waiting to see any other questions that come onto the chat, they may or may not come. But as always, I have lots of questions for you and we had some previous questions as well. Um, I, I just wondered particularly with some of the work placement things, if there are any that particularly stood out for you? Are there any, again, some of the kind of anecdotes that you've got from there? Because I think they always really uh, are the best way for the students maybe to understand what it's like to go on these placements and what advantages they have when they're on them. Yeah, thanks, Joe. That's a great question. So, I mean, yeah, we do have, we have many sort of testimonials, actually, that also um, on that web link that I gave about our just graduate destinations, it'd be worth sort of going and having a look at those where the students are actually reflecting on their own experience. But we have got examples where students have gone out to perhaps participate in um, one example, for example, is a health communications industry, which is set up in Dundee, and it's actually based um, on the city campus. And so this is about, you know, communi communicating science, whether that's to the public or whether that's to policymakers and doing an internship with that particular company. We've had two of our students who are now employed there. So I think that, you know, there really can be a gateway opportunity there directly to a career. Um, the other opportunities, for example, are our local spin out companies. So these are really where you're working at the very cutting edge. So we've um, got a new center for protein degradation that's established. It's a spin out from one of our labs in the drug discovery unit. And this is where our researcher has developed a new um, assay in which you can tag proteins that perhaps are working and functionally in a bad way, apparently in a disease situation, you can tag them and destroy them. And the assay he's developed destroys that protein within a 15 minute time window. So this is a particularly fantastic, you know, cutting edge forefront element and area where students can be brought in and work for eight to 10 weeks in an area that's, you know, just about exploding. Brilliant. I, we had um, last week, I think it was, and um, we had uh, your fellow Scottish institution, St Andrews, um, with their medical department was in. And, and we were asking and talking to them about where the role of doctors lies and where the role of kind of other you know, medical professionals lies kind of looking forward. And she was saying very much in a, in a kind of modern surgery, you'll have a lot of different people in that. Um, capacity that aren't haven't gone the doctor route they've gone one of these various other technical routes what's your view of that you know how, how, where, what's the relationship between medicine and and biomedical science and indeed uh, are students actually going on to medicine after they've left you again a great question joe so there's a number of elements to that um, answer i want to touch on so the first being that particularly our biomedical sciences undergraduate degrees those are taught by researchers in both the School of Life Sciences and the School of Medicine. So you really are getting that beautiful kind of synergy, learning both from the sort of subcellular, so the molecular level, all the way up to the organismal. And I think that, you know, that's a really fantastic opportunity that we have in the way in which we built those degrees. But it also means that then you have access to to the School of Medicine, you know, throughout your undergraduate degree. And indeed, there's a heavy proportion of our students that do apply to medicine, postgraduate med medicine, as a result of doing an undergraduate degree in either biological or biomedical sciences. And they're very successful in that. So we have a fantastic, um, in fact, one of our undergraduate students who then became the president of the Singapore Society has gone on to do um, postgraduate medicine. So again, I can provide, she's, gonna, she's done a fantastic vlog, but again, and if that's of interest, I can provide that because I think hearing it from peer to peer engagement in that way is really powerful. Um, so, yeah, I think that th those two areas of career, you know, I think an undergraduate degree in science really can prepare you um, either for following a career in industry, a career in academia or indeed a career in medicine. Okay, fantastic. And I, I just thinking more, more generally about about the industries that you're going into and obviously you've mentioned some there and about the, the cutting edge areas that are starting to look at I mean what are for, for students going into this as, a, as an area now of study if they if they stay perhaps in a more linear line obviously you mentioned you go into banking pretty much go into any industry you like really but for those that stay more in the kind of linear line what do you think that the key things they'll be looking at are over the next 10, 10 20 years I suppose as our graduates come through the system 
I mean, and a great question. So we've just done a sort of research strategy away day, actually, in the School of Life Sciences, thinking about exactly that and what are the areas that we need to recruit new researchers in. And so those fall into a number of buckets. So the first is artificial intelligence and machine learning, closely linked with big data. So, you know, we have developed huge amounts of bioinformatics, proteomics, transcriptomics and genomic data, but it's really trying to pick apart that now and use machine learning and artificial intelligence to apply that data to different settings, different disease settings, and understand a little bit more about how we can then use our biological assays to, um, you know, treat diseases, but hand in hand working with machine learners. The other area is drug discovery. So, you know, going forward, absolutely the sort of pharmaceutical, pharmacological um, areas. And that's, you know, where Dundee really is world class and leading. So we have the oldest, the, the world's oldest sort of partnership between academia and industry with our drug discovery unit. And that really has been a collaboration where um, our sort of founder, Sir Philip Cohen, decided that rather than working in competition, we're going to get to our end goal a lot quicker if we work in collaboration. So we have fantastically close collaborations and links with um, you know, the world's biggest pharma companies. And in fact, our drug discovery unit is like a little pharma industry within an academic setting. So all of our equipment and our facilities are of industry standard. Um, and so perhaps the third area that I think, you know, is huge growth area, and that's in the context of sort of immunology, but together with aging. So looking at, you know, um, neurodegenerative diseases, immunological diseases, but in the context of aging. Okay, that's absolutely brilliant for, for an ever-aging population. <laughs> so, yeah, I, which I'm feeling myself. I, I, I think maybe just touch on one thing from there. It sounds like quite an interdisciplinary um, approach that you're taking. I mean, is, is that something that's changed a lot? Are we talking about maybe going back 20 years and people were perhaps more siloed in how they were working on some of these projects. But that really sounded like you were working almost across the whole of a STEM based um, you know, um, subject in terms of generating this research in the first place. Okay, and actually that is a complete golden nugget. So I'll use my lab as an example. So at our weekly lab meetings, which of course the honors students are part of, I have a sort of collaborative team where I have a mathematical modeler, a stem cell biologist, a biochemist and myself. So those are all researchers listening to the weekly updates from honours students, master's students and PhD students. And so the students absolutely are getting that interdisciplinary element. Two of my honours students are doing a bioinformatics project. So we're building a database looking at RNA binding proteins of humans, mice and zebrafish to look and see where the conservation of those different elements um, overlap and lie because obviously the zebrafish and the, the mouse are animal models for human disease. And so we can look at the conservation and then identify you know, conserved regulators that we can then address the function of in animal models um, and then apply that to what we know about human diseases. So that interdisciplinarity is an element now of both undergraduate and postgraduate teaching that is mission critical for students to sort of grab that opportunity, you know, take summer placements, learning about a different skill set um, and sort of build up that repertoire of skills. And I think in terms of your employability prospects, that is an excellent sort of piece of advice. Is that, and does that work, obviously, bring it back to kind of where the students are at now, does that kind of, is that something you're looking for on the way in from students that they maybe have, uh, again, I suppose the traditional view that we have of British education, as opposed to say American, is that we're saying, look, you have to be very focused on single things, but actually a personal statement that was quite interdisciplinary, is that something you would actually think, you know, actually that's quite good that they're looking at how these things integrate with other, other STEM subjects, even other humanity subjects, essentially. Absolutely. I think having an open mind, whether or not you've had the opportunity already to engage in interdisciplinarity, which might not be the case, but if in a personal statement you put something in there that comments 
on the fact that the way that this field is moving is to integrate you know information and learning from different disciplines whether that is physics or mathematical modeling or bioinformatics i think that's an excellent excellent thing in this day and age to be putting into a personal statement and to recognize the power of that interdisciplinarity okay fantastic well as yet no other questions have come forward um you, you've rattled through it at a fair old pace there and we had our videos we've got our links to give out as well so students can take that away with them um so i think well we can we can potentially uh, leave it here because i think we've covered a lot and a lot of interesting stuff in a very short space of time so i'll give you one last call for any questions that you want um kim to answer like i say we will have those links in some way um, um a teacher or one of the people that can actually work Zoom, we'll, we'll be able to send those out um, to you at some point. Uh, but if you would like a question answered, that's fine. It could be a technical one as well. I haven't at the moment gone down all of the A-level stuff because again, that, that information is all on, on the website. Um, but otherwise, I think then I will say we might leave it there then because I think we've covered uh, a lot of ground there in a very short space of time. So, um, Kim, if you just want to stay on the line for a little bit longer, um, students, um, if you want to stay with us, um, you can. Um, if you want to ask a question, turn off your mic and ask one. If you find that easier, um, you may do that. Otherwise, please leave the Zoom. Um, we'll forward any of the additional links Kim's mentioned to you, um, so the videos and stuff, and you can watch them in your own time. Okay, so thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming along. So again, just to those of you who are left, if you do want to um, ask a question, feel free to, free to either pull it in the chat or you can now turn off your mic and ask one if you'd like. And if not, then please leave the Zoom call. Lots of thank yous, thank you very much. Um, so we've got Paul still on the call. We've got, I think, oh, it's just Paul. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Hey there, Dan. Hello. Oh, Paul, I, I, I thought you were one of our students. I mean, no worries, no. You're right, uh, I was thinking, you do look a bit old for one of them, just <laughs> a, a little bit. But you know, some of them are like big lads, big rugby players. I thought, you know, they could have been. But uh, no, I think you're from Dundee, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have no knowledge of biomedical science, so I was just <laughs> sitting listening in to Kim's expertise. Okay, great. Well, Kim, like I said, I, I don't mind it being quick, fast like that, but I think we covered some good stuff, like we said. Um, it's so, really yeah, great. No, it's, it's like perfect. Yeah, good, good pace. Get on and do it. So, excellent. Um, well, I don't know. I seem to have gone through it very quickly, but um, I will definitely, I'll send you the PowerPoint by we transfer. Joe, okay. who should I send it to? Joe or Ruth? Probably me, and and then I can give it to the kids because I think I have access to more classrooms. Than